Welcome to the channel. Today, I will provide a recap of the gripping survival movie Alive. Based on a true story, it follows a group of individuals who were on a plane journey when an unexpected incident occurred. As the plane traversed over a mountain, it collided with the summit, resulting in a devastating crash. The pressing question arises, will the passengers manage to survive this harrowing ordeal and find their way back home? The narrative unfolds on October 13, 1972, featuring a student team from Stella Maris College embarking on a trip to Chile for a rugby match. Their aircraft soared above the majestic Andes mountain range, renowned as one of the highest in the world. Suddenly, an intense jolt reverberated through the cabin, catching everyone off guard as the plane goes out of control. The pilots, realizing the imminent crash, grappled with the dire circumstances. Eventually, one of the plane's wings collided with the mountain, fracturing the aircraft into two sections. Passengers seated towards the rear were violently thrown into the air, while the front portion continued to skid forward until it collided with a rock, delivering yet another jarring impact that affected everyone on board. The collision left numerous individuals injured, and tragically, seven individuals seated at the back of the plane had already lost their lives. Amidst the wreckage, the survivors, some with head injuries and others with broken legs, rallied together to assist those in need. Regrettably, one of the pilots had perished, while the other remained in critical condition. Two individuals named Tintin and Kanessa approached the injured pilot, endeavoring to establish contact with the radio operator using the pilot's radio equipment, in hopes of relaying their precise location. However, the radio's battery had completely drained, rendering their attempts futile. With the passage of time, the injured pilot also succumbed to his injuries, joining the tragic toll of four others who had lost their lives. Nevertheless, the remaining survivors clung to hope, believing that a rescue team would soon arrive to their aid. Nightfall descended upon them, compelling everyone to seek shelter within the fractured section of the plane known as the fuselage. Despite enduring the freezing cold, the injured individual's conditions deteriorated due to the harsh climate. Nonetheless, they endured the long night, and as the new day dawned. As morning dawned, the survivors contemplated the possibility of fixing the radio by using another battery. Unfortunately, there was no spare battery available. The radio's battery, located in the tail section of the plane, tail section had already been split and lost amidst the mountains. The bodies of the deceased, including a woman, were laid on the snow. Carlos, upon seeing her, expressed remorse for shouting at her, Checking their belongings, they realized they had very little to sustain themselves. There were a few chocolates for consumption, and they had managed to arrange some wine to provide warmth in the harsh winter conditions. However, they had an abundance of cigarettes. In order to maximize their survival chances, they collectively decided to ration their food. Amidst their circumstances, they suddenly heard the sound of a helicopter. Joy overwhelmed everyone as they believed the rescue team had arrived, anticipating their imminent return home. However, due to the cloud cover, the rescue team was unable to spot them. Their hopes were dashed, and they had to endure another cold night. As the new day broke, they held on to the hope that the rescue team would arrive soon to save them. In the meantime, to sustain themselves, they gathered snow and placed it on a sheet, hoping it would melt to water. Among the survivors was Nando, who remained in a coma due to his injuries. Upon regaining consciousness, he realized the devastating reality of the plane crash. The shock intensified when he learned of his mother's passing. However, his sister Susanna, although severely injured, was still alive. After a few hours, they spotted an airplane. Waving their hands, they fervently believed that the airplane had noticed them, and a surge of joy filled their hearts as they believed rescue was imminent, with the expectation of being saved by the following morning. Amidst the joy, some individuals consumed the remaining chocolates before going to sleep. With the arrival of morning, everyone gathers outside, eagerly awaiting the rescue team. However, as the entire day passes, their hope dwindles as no one comes to their rescue. Evening approaches and hunger begins to hit their stomachs. Tintin decides to distribute the available rations, but upon opening the box that held the chocolates, he discovers it is empty. Unbeknownst to him, they had already been eaten the previous night while he was asleep. This realization sparks an argument among the group, though they are helpless to change the situation. Nevertheless, a glimmer of hope emerges. They contemplate connecting the radio to the battery, hoping to seek help through its transmission. However, the battery is located in the tail section of the plane, which had already broken in the accident, and lost somewhere in the mountains. Determined, a group of five individuals ventures out to search for the battery. 
After a significant amount of time, one of them slips, causing the snow beneath them to shift. In a precarious moment, they manage to grab hold of their companion, narrowly avoiding a dangerous fall. Recognizing the risks, they decide it is not safe to continue their search. Night approaches once again, accompanied by cold weather and long nights. They retreat and spend the night inside the fuselage, the only shelter protecting them from the elements. Without the fuselage, their chances of survival would have been grim. With the arrival of morning, one of them listens to a radio and hears the devastating news that the search for them has been called off. The government believes that no one has survived. That night, while everyone is asleep, Susanna, Nando's sister, passes away. Nando, shattered by the loss of his mother and now his sister, is consumed by grief. Nine days have elapsed, and hope is fading among the remaining survivors. In the midst of this dire situation, Nando gathers everyone and delivers the unsettling message that they must consume the bodies of the deceased in order to survive, as their energy reserves are dwindling. However, not all members of the group agree with Nando's proposal. The next day, during their collective gathering, Hugo puts forward a solemn promise, if he were to die, they should consume his body. Failure to do so would result in him returning as a malevolent ghost, seeking vengeance upon them. Despite the initial laughter that follows, similar discussions take place among the group. Eventually, albeit reluctantly, they commence the grim act of consuming the dead bodies as a means of survival. A situation fraught with horror and distress. Nando, in particular, is devastated as her mother and sister are there in the dead bodies. After their gruesome meal, they devise a plan to retrieve the battery from the back of the plane, aiming to establish communication using the radio. Three members of the group embark on a day-long journey in search of a suitable place to rest for the night. However, the extreme cold leads to their awakening the next morning, only to find themselves covered in ice. Undeterred, they resolutely strategize their next steps. Eventually, they reach a location where plane debris is scattered and where some unfortunate individuals have already perished. Regrettably, they are still unable to locate the battery. Recognizing that remaining in that location would mean succumbing to the bitter cold, they decide to return. On their way back, they make plans to bring food and drink with them, understanding the importance of sustenance in their quest for the battery. That night, they attempt to burn a few items, including their money, in an effort to ward off the chilling cold. It becomes increasingly evident that none of these material possessions hold any value in the face of nature's wrath. As their hardships continued to mount, an unexpected and massive avalanche cascaded down the mountainside, resembling a sea of rushing snow waves. The force of the snow crashed into the fuselage where they had sought shelter, violently jolting them and burying them beneath its weight. Their attempts to escape proved futile as the plane became completely engulfed in snow. The storm persisted, battering them relentlessly throughout the following day. Finally, when the storm subsided, they mustered all their strength to dig their way out of the snow. Carlos exclaimed with hope, look. After countless days, the sun has emerged. It feels as though divine forces are guiding us. Sadly, eight more lives were lost in this calamity. Undeterred, they cleared the snow from the top of the fuselage, which had served as their sanctuary for the past 50 days. With each passing day, the nights grew longer and the days shorter. Now, for the third time, they set their sights on retrieving the battery. They organized the team and gathered provisions for sustenance. They also formulated an alternate plan, if the battery remained elusive, they would proceed on their journey and attempt to escape through the mountain pass. Three individuals embarked on the mission to locate the battery. After careful consideration, they discovered a section of the plane where they found clothing, supplies, and even some chocolates. Their spirits were uplifted, knowing they had come across the much-needed battery. However, the battery's weight rendered it impossible to carry. Consequently, they decided to enlist the help of Roy, an electrical expert, who possessed the necessary skills. Roy was brought to the spot, but despite their best efforts, they couldn't manage to activate the radio. Nando insisted that they should make an attempt to escape from the mountains, but his plea fell on deaf ears. Reluctantly, the four of them began their return journey, battling against an incoming storm that made their passage exceedingly challenging. Nonetheless, Nando held on to his fervent desire to find a way out, even if his companions were not receptive. Sixty-one days had elapsed since their ordeal began, prompting Nando, Tintin, and Canessa to prepare for their departure. The three embarked on their journey, with Carlos sharing a dream he had the previous night. I dreamt that you reached lush green valleys. Do not worry, you will find a way to escape from there. 
Following their departure, the three individuals embarked on a perilous and exhausting two-day journey, eventually reaching a towering peak of the mountain. As they surveyed their surroundings, all they could see were mountains, stretching endlessly before them. Overwhelmed by despair, Kinesa collapsed on the ground, losing all hope. It was then that Nando noticed the absence of snow between two mountains, suggesting the presence of valleys nestled approximately 50 miles away. However, Kinesa believed that attempting such a long and treacherous journey would only lead to their demise, considering the difficulties they had already endured. Nevertheless, Nando refused to yield, emphasizing that they had not surrendered to defeat for 70 days and must continue the same. They decided to send Tintin back to conserve rations for their onward journey, and Tintin began his return trek. Undeterred, Nando and Kinesa continued their arduous journey, fully aware of the risks they may face. After 12 days of travel, they finally emerged from the mountains, greeted by a breathtaking valley adorned with rivers and inhabited by people. Meanwhile, the others remained trapped in the mountains, their hope extinguished, and provisions depleted. At that critical moment, the sound of helicopters reached their ears, an army rescue mission had arrived. Kinesa and Nando had arranged for the helicopters, alerting the army about the lives at stake in the mountains. Overwhelmed with joy, they celebrated their miraculous rescue. Every individual was saved, and proper burial was accorded to the deceased, marked with a cross to honor their memory. This true story unfolded in 1972, where nearly 29 lives were lost, and only 16 managed to survive. The incident remains etched in people's memories to this day. As their journey concludes, this tale imparts a profound lesson, to never lose courage in the face of adversity. It acknowledges the difficulty of maintaining unwavering bravery in challenging circumstances. However, even after enduring the loss of his sister and mother, Nando exhibited immense courage, saving not only himself, but also the lives of others. And so, the story reaches its conclusion. If you liked the explanation, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon.